we go. First of many. At least it's only next door. <laughs> might be an idea to let us get out first, Master. Well, I thought Robert might want my room. You mean you want Robert's room? I wouldn't mind. And you've paid for it, of course. Mm -hmm. Ah, so he's told you then? Yeah. Smart operator, our Robert. Rachel paid him as well. Oh, well, never mind. First come, first served. It's not my fault she wanted to go back to Leeds a day early. Well, it's nothing to do with us. Anyway, Robert's moving into his room when he gets back from school. I won't mind a lift. Brother's taking him in. Oh, you're not back today as well. Oh, great. Who timed this move? Buster Keaton. I can take the day off if you want. No, not on your first day back. We'll manage, Mark. Right, well, I'll move the rest of this stuff in when I get back. I'll have to get some food as well. Sort out that fridge. Oh, Sarah, um, can you show us how to work the washing machine? Oh. Hang on, hang on. There's time for all that. You just dump that stuff and we'll take it from there, OK? All right. He's keen. I remember when you first moved away. Yeah, it was only next door. It's still away. Well, I could have done with a hand and all. Like you said, Jack, it is only next door after all. <laughs> Morning, Elizabeth. Eric. Hope you don't think I'm making a habit out of this. Out of what? Well, calling on my way to work. I was wondering about this evening, whether you'd like to go out somewhere. Oh, I'd love to, Eric, but I can't this evening. I've got a pile of ironing. Huh. I'm sorry. I've got to get it done. Yeah. No, I, I understand. I've got a pile of my own. <laughs> Not as high as mine, I'll bet. I'm sorry. Never mind. I'm uh, not a bad cook, you know. Uh, how about if I prepare a meal this evening? Oh, Eric, you don't need to do that. No, I, I'd like to. You could do your ironing, we could be together. If you'd like to, of course. Yes, I'd like that. Uh, right. uh, at what time? Seven. Right. Time the workmen say they'd be here today. About nine. God, it'd be so nice not to have dust everywhere. Yeah, that cereal did taste a bit gritty. Still, not long now. We'll be able to put the place on the market. How long do you think it'll take to sell? Who knows? Chris, we are doing the right thing, aren't we? Look, would we be doing the right thing if we stayed here just because Dad had bought it for us? No. Well, then. It does make him look a fool. It's his own fault. Yeah, I know. All this business, it's... It's taken the shine off things a bit. Look, it'll come right, you'll see. Even if we have to pay him back every penny he paid for it. He was there again this morning, early. Who was? Eric Pollard, over the road at Elizabeth Feldman's. You're determined to make something out of nothing, aren't you, girl? What time is this? Well, I was just coming into work and I saw his car scooting off. You've got a very fertile imagination. And you didn't actually see Eric, did you? Well, the car was enough. Well, I suppose you didn't see Elizabeth either. Oh, I saw Elizabeth plain enough, picking her milk off the doorstep. You don't believe me, do you? Well, of course I do, Phil. Elizabeth takes her milk off the doorstep every morning. That doesn't mean she's having a great swinging affair with Eric Pollard. Well, how do you explain the car? and her waving at us. He was just passing through. He drives through the village quite often. She probably saw him at the same time as you did. Oh, you think so? I know so, Carol. You are putting two and two together and making seven. This lot shouldn't take long, Jack. It's so everyone keeps telling me. There's no Mark and Rachel. Joe's gone. Sarah's sorting out next door. Who do you think's going to do this miracle? The fairies? <laughs> just call me Tinkerbell. <laughs> How are you today, anyway? I'm all right, why? Uh, I saw Rachel yesterday before she went back. I didn't have to be Poirot to work out your dad around. Oh, well, if she says so. It's just something and nothing, really. It seemed like more than that to me. Oh, well, you know what it's like. Well, if you want to get yourself back in a good book, she could bring her things over. Problem is, she and Mark are after the same room. I yeah, know, I'm not getting involved. Let them sort it out. I'm having nothing to do with it. I won't be in for lunch, love. I'll be spending the morning at the holiday village. Well, take care and keep your mind on what you're doing. Building sites can be dangerous. Don't worry. I mean it, Frank. 
Forget about Chris and Cathy in the house. It'll work itself out. I wonder how many well-meaning fathers feel like I do now. It's just Chris being funny again. There's nothing for it, is there? I'll just have to have it out with Chris, face to face. I was about to suggest that. I'll go and see him this afternoon. Good. But take it easy, though, Frank. We both still have to live with each other when all this is over. Kim, trust me. I think I know how to handle him. I never knew I collected so much stuff. We'll find somewhere to put everything. <sighs> I've brought too much. I know I have. Well, some of my stuff will have to go. Oh. <laughs> I'll put them on the sink. Um, I've left the cutlery for Rachel and Mark. If you prefer yours, they can have mine. Of course not. I think Mark's really looking forward to moving. Sarah. Yes? Well, I meant what I said about sharing this place. You don't have to ask me if you want to do anything. And I meant what I said, Annie. This is your home, first and foremost. I oh, was sure to get in each other's way a bit at first, but I'll fit in with you. Annie. It's what I want, sir. Thanks. What do you want to? I'll just put it down there, Michael. How's the coffee going? Oh, um... Oh, oh. <laughs> Coming up. Nothing wrong, Carol? Oh, nothing, Mr Turner. Just looking at the weather, you know. Spying on Elizabeth, you mean? Don't you think you're letting this little fantasy get the better of you? Fantasy nothing! And I'm no spy, merely an interested observer of life. Is that what you call it? Watching her every move? I'm not doing any harm. You've absolutely no evidence to support these stupid claims of yours. I'm Pollard and Elizabeth. Mr Turner, do you ever find me interfering with any of your interests? Big problem? You have a number of interests, don't you? The shooting and the eating and the cooking and so on. I enjoy a number of pursuits in keeping with my status, yes. Well, so do I. And one of them is people. I love people and I love finding out about them. It's my nature. And I wouldn't be half as good at my job if I was any different. Let's be honest about this, shall we? You're just nosy, Carol. <laughs> don't look at me. It was your idea. I know, but I'm just as stuck as you are. So, what are we going to do with them? We can give them all names? Oh, now we've rescued them, we might as well give them a name. All right, we'll call those two Frank and Chris. They're always eyeing each other up, ready for a fight. All right, then the little fat one's Chris, then. <laughs> I'm going to tell him you said oh, that. Hi, <laughs> Joe. Got any ideas what to call them? Hey, easy, yeah. Uh... Dave D, Dozy, Beaky, Mick, Titch, uh, the Nolan sisters, and Kylie and Jason. Dave D, Dozy, what? Bob Group in the 60s. Before my time, of course. Mm. Actually, I was looking for Frank. He said he was spending most of the morning up at the Holiday Village. I must have missed him then. Well, he was going to see Chris this afternoon, but not till later. Oh, I'll pop there now. Uh, let me know when they uh, cut their first record. What? Does Chris know Frank's going to see him? I don't think so. He thought it was about time they both laid their cards on the table. I think he might find Chris isn't in the mood for card games. Oh, will we ever be straight? These are nice, Sarah. I've never seen them before. She keeps them locked up. Don't see the point of having them if you can't use them. I don't want them to break. I don't know. I don't know how we accumulated so much junk. It's not junk. Well, I tell you, if someone were to come through that door now, I'd offer them ten quid to take the lot off me. Afternoon, everybody. Hi. Hey, Moss. Jack wants to give you ten pounds. Pardon? <laughs> Take the notice. You're in time for lunch, if you don't mind your sandwiches. Oh, a sandwich would be very nice, thank you, Sarah. <laughs> in your own good time, I can see as how you're very busy. Uh, why don't you take Amos through to the parlour, Annie? Oh, there's so much to be done here. Oh, we can manage this lot, Ma. Come on, then, Amos. We'll leave them in, please. <sighs> Are you staying for dinner, Michael? Oh, yeah. Great, thanks. Oh. Emmerdale. Michael, it's for you. Rachel. Hi. Uh, all right, all right. No, no. Uh, yeah. Um, well, it's a bit difficult. Yeah, yeah. Right, yeah. OK, me too. Bye. Everything all right? Yeah. 
Uh, what's next? Lunch. Oh, great. <laughs> <laughs> Good afternoon, Carol. Usual, please, my dear. Oh, I thought I saw you earlier across the road. No? Huh. Must be mistaken. <laughs> ah, it must be somebody else with a car exactly like yours. Yes. I'll uh, have a bottle of wine, Master, here, please. Oh, a special occasion. No, I just enjoy a good glass of wine, Carol. Yes, of course. And uh, what do you think she'd prefer, red or white? Pardon? Your secret's safe with me, Eric. What do you mean? Oh, come on. You can't fool me, you and Elizabeth. <laughs> Nonsense. <laughs> oh. And there was I thinking what a nice couple you'd make. You're not going to disappoint me now, are you? Yes, well, it's really... She's a lucky woman, Elizabeth. And I think she'd prefer the white. Dear. Oh, well, perhaps you could recommend something. My pleasure, Eric. And I hope Elizabeth's. Corfolk time of year, wouldn't you say, Annie? It's January, Amos. Of course it's cold. Do you realise this temperature in Spain, even as we speak, is a balmy 60 degrees? And in three weeks' time, I shall be sitting on my patio in evening sunshine, sipping a cool drink, listening to chatter at chicadas in trees. And you still want me to come with you? Oh, I do. Have you made up your mind yet? I'm still thinking about well, it. That's what you said last time I asked you. I need time. Time's up, Annie. A flight to book. Now, what's it to be? Yorkshire cold or Spanish sunshine? I said I'd phone, yeah? Yeah. Oh, I really miss you. I wish I could put my arms around you now. Well, only five more days to weekend, eh? Uh, well, that's all Robert's stuff then, Jack. Um, I've got, I've got to go, Rachel. I'll phone you later. All right. Bye. <coughs> oh, hi. Michael, I thought you'd gone. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, well, no, I, I was just off. Is Rachel OK? Yeah, yeah. Oh, is that the time? I've got to go. I'll see you later. Uh, thanks for your help. OK. <laughs> Not as I want to push you into any kind of decision, Annie, but I need to know. There's a lot of change going on here at the moment. I feel I should be here to see it through. So you'll not come, then? On the other hand, Sarah might like a bit of time to settle in without me getting underneath her feet. So you will come? It needs careful thought. <laughs> So you might come. I'm not being very fair, am I? Shall I tell you something, Annie? When Mr Wilkes and I were talking about it, he were very keen as you should come and all. I think if he were here, he'd insist on it. Do you want to pick Robert up later, or shall I? Well, I thought I might change the diesel filter on the tractor this afternoon. So I'll pick him up. Well, unless you want to change the filter. I could try. <laughs> you would too, wouldn't you? That's one of the things I love about you. You try anything once. Within reason. Ah, you remind me of Ma sometimes, you oh, know. Great. I've got a fella who loves me because I remind him of his mother. Oh, you know what I mean. Come on. Ah! Stop it, John! Let me go! Lynn. Sarah, Jack. Just to wish you happiness in your new home. Oh, well. Thanks. I thought you might still be up to your ears in moving. Oh, it's more or less sorted out now. Thanks for the thought. You're welcome. If there's anything I can do... Oh, well, not yeah, really. Well, you... oh, which is it? Well, you can help me feed the calves if you like. I'd enjoy the company. Well, go on then, Jack. I thought you'd got a tractor engine to sort out. <laughs> Come on. I sold a bottle of wine this dinner time, Mr. Turner. Really? How oh, very interesting. To Eric Pollard. So not surprising about that. He opened those wine. He wanted the expensive one for his evening out with Elizabeth. He told you that. In words as clear as crystal. He's a liar. He's well known for it. An expensive way to tell a lie, Mr. Turner. Big changes, eh? 
Oh, not so big, really. It's only next door after all. Still, moving in with Annie. Are you not worried at all? No. Well, a bit, I suppose, if I'm honest. But we're getting on really well these days. You know, I envy you sometimes. Me? Yeah. You seem to know exactly what you want. And you get it. Oh, I wouldn't say that exactly. Wouldn't you? You've got the farm, the farmhouse, Jack. I had a drink with him the other night, you know. Mm, he said. Singing your praises all evening. How independent you were and strong-minded. <laughs> Are you sure that's what he said? He usually calls me pig-headed and stubborn. Of course, it can be a mistake sometimes. To be too independent. Every man likes to feel needed, don't you think? Maybe. Your Jack was really kind the other night. Offered me a shoulder to cry on whenever I wanted one. If you've come round to apologise, Dad, you've left it a bit late. I've come round because I think it's about time we sorted this business out. What is there to sort out? You could listen to my side for once. I can't see the point. We've decided to sell. I see. I've been a bit of a fool, haven't I? You could say that. Fathers always want better for their kids. I just want better for you and Cathy. I don't want you to struggle the way your mother and I did. Yeah, but we don't mind struggling, Dad. Anyway, it's not like you and Mum, really, is it? No, I suppose not. I don't suppose there's any chance of you changing your mind. I mean, it's not every day you get given a house. Yeah, but we never wanted it in the first place. I should have asked you. I'm sorry. That's all I can say. Yeah, but well, we all make mistakes. Does that mean I'm forgiven? Yeah. You'll never guess what I've just done. What? I locked up the missile and went next door. What for? Out of habit, I suppose. I thought it was a bit strange when there were no lights on. <laughs> I must say, Lynn was the last person I expected to call. Ah, yeah, well, she fancies me, see? <laughs> Don't flatter yourself. It's true. Why do you think she gave me that kiss New Year's Eve? Too many drinks, both of you. Rubbish. Hello, Mark. How was school? Same as ever. What you got there? Shopping for the next week. Oh, these are what you call your essentials for the week, are they? Next two weeks, if the price is anything to go by. Blimey. You're a real gourmet, you are, I must say. <laughs> Crisps, beef burgers, coke, frozen chips, bite-sized Mars bars. Mars? Yeah. Well, I haven't got round to working out a balanced diet yet. Carol, just keep half an eye on the restaurant for me, will you? I'm stepping out for a few moments. Well, don't be too long, Mr. Turner. We're getting a bit busy already. I'd like to see Elizabeth on business. All oh, right. right. Um, well, give my regards to Eric. Eric? Eric Pollard. Eric Pollard and Elizabeth Feldman are getting it together. Well, I never. I wonder turn into a face as long as a wet weekend. Can't it wait, Alan? No, I'm afraid not. May I? Well? I, I need to get the figures for the hatcher in the, in the final place. I sent them this afternoon. Well, I've revised the numbers. We need to talk about... What was that noise? What was what? I distinctly heard a noise. I didn't hear anything. Well, I did, Elizabeth. I'm going to check it. For your sake, you can't be too careful these days. Alan! Alan, this really is too much. Yes. Yeah, I, I, I'm sorry. I shouldn't have come barging in like that. I, I can't see you're busy. Yes, well, perhaps you'll let me get on with it. Yes, yes, I, I'm so sorry to have disturbed you. So, the revised figures can wait? Yes, yes, of course. Now, I have more pressing matters to attend to now. Do, do, do carry on. I'll see myself out. And I think 
he was there last night as well. I thought we'd ask you a cab back there. And he's not been in here so regular, has he? I know, I'll be telling Turner. Isn't that right, Mr Turner? I think Pollard and been coming in as much lately. Not you too. <laughs> so, what are you doing now? Yeah, this second, yeah. Sorry, I just dropped the phone. You look right upset. Well, because his worst fears have been realised. You think you found them together? I think it's a little bit early for that yet, sir. When are you coming back, Friday or Saturday? Oh, steady on, Mr Turner! I don't see what you see in him. Every woman likes somebody to take a bit of notice of themselves. Harold? A word, please. Oh, dear. I told you he was obsessed. <coughs> yeah, well, I helped Jack and Sarah today. Yeah. Oh, for heaven's sake! Look, I'll go and phone you from somewhere else. I've heard it's quiet on the motorway. I am trying to calm down, Carol, as I don't wish to make a scene. You shouldn't believe me in the first place. Carol, I wouldn't believe you if you were a nun sitting on a stack of Bibles. Well, didn't you go across there just now? Yes, I did. Only to find the woman whose name you are so eager to besmirch up to her neck in domesticity. What? She was ironing. Well, well, she's a clever woman. But I tell you, Carol, she was alone. Was she now? I will not have my pub used as a scandal house. I know what I know. Then I suggest you keep what you know to yourself while you're in my employ. I will not stand by and see Elizabeth Feldman being slandered. Do I make myself clear? <laughs> what would you have done if he'd gone upstairs? Offered him a drink. <laughs> <laughs> Poor Alan. He really thought he could us, didn't he? Yeah, not that it's any of his business. I don't know why he feels he has to be so protective. Because he's jealous, that's why. Oh, no, I don't think so. He just seems to have to know what's going on. Yes. Well, he'll have to wait a little bit longer, won't he? <laughs> I've got to say it, Sarah. This is the best stew you've ever done. That stew is a stroganoff. Yeah, it's still good, though. Yeah, it's great. Oh, must be the Arga, Annie. What? You mean the cooker next door's no good? Of course it is. You can always come here and eat, you know. Hang on, Ma. He wants to fend for himself. He's already started a collection of frozen chips. <laughs> the lad needs time to settle down. I reckon you two do as well. Oh, well, we're almost settled now. Yeah. Feels like we've lived here forever, doesn't it, Robert? Yeah. It's very nice too, Sarah. Oh. Well, I think you need time to sort yourselves out. And I think you need to do it without me. What are you talking about, man? I'm going away for a while. Amos has asked me to go to his villa in Spain. And I've said I would. <laughs> 